Hey, Coach, so glad you found us on YouTube. Let me know if I can be of any help. Leave a comment down below. Make sure you subscribe, please. Uh, also, if you're looking for a little bit more depth, please check out teachhoops.com. There'll be a, something up one of these corners up here. I can never remember which one. Or down below, it is a community of basketball coaches, like-minded basketball coaches, tons of resources, hundreds of hours of videos, um, office hours, one-on-one -on -one calls with me. You name it, it's in there. Uh, let me know if you have any questions uh, and enjoy the video. Thanks. So I have a question for you guys. All right. Tell me, this is a 2-3 zone. I want you to tell me the most valuable person as, a, as you think of it as a defense. If you could pull out one of these guys, which guy would you pull out? Which guy would you eliminate? Middleman. The middleman. Wouldn't it be fun to play against that defense? Okay? But let me ask you this. How come you never touch this guy? All right, now maybe there's an exception in this room, perhaps. Maybe somebody here says, oh, yeah, we, we, we work on that guy. But chances are um, there, there are very few offenses against the zone that really try to get after this guy. And he is the most important person in the game right now defensively. And we usually don't deal with him very much. So what I'd like to do today is talk to you about the SEAL offense. And this is something I've done all the way back into the uh, uh, late 70s, early 80s. Uh, we're going to see 2-3 zones. And it depends on what level you're at. You could be Jim Boheim at Syracuse using a 2-3 zone. Uh, you could be um, um, a famous coach in northern Minnesota using a 2-3 zone. Uh, but a lot of people use 2-3 zones. And they, they do it for a couple of reasons. One, um, they think maybe they can't guard people man-to-man. -man. All right, that's perhaps one reason. Uh, other reasons are that maybe they're thinking, uh, you know, we're in foul trouble. We really don't want to move around too much and get caught up. So maybe they want to do that. Uh, or I'm not sure what the issue is, but you'll see your share of 2-3 zone. What I want to do is I want to talk about the various things that this will do to get, you, get us in a position where you can get some scoring opportunities like very, very quick. Um, what we want to do is we want to use the ball penetration, we want to use ball fakes, quick passes, uh, we want to elicit ill-advised double teams, all right? And, and maybe we've been on both sides of that coin where there's been a double team and it's been successful and then we've seen double teams that just didn't work. Well, we want to create those uh, ones that you get double teamed and they don't work. All right. Uh, we want to maximize the spacing. Once again, we're on an equidistant uh, uh, consideration here. Um, we want to attack the defensive player in the middle, this guy. And uh, we really want to get after this guy. We also want to um, uh, force them out of it. All right. You may say, well, I'd rather play them 2-3 zone. Well, you'll get a couple layups on this right away, or you'll get some wide open threes, and then you can just choose whether or not you uh, you want to stay in this uh, or not, okay? And I'm almost guaranteeing, I'm guaranteeing layups are open threes. Um, and, but your team has to be very, very poor on talent to not be successful at this. Um, now, I usually don't make those kind of statements, all right? But when we, when we, uh, when we walk through this downstairs, I think you're going to conceptually see uh, how this, asp how this uh, all works. So I want you to kind of immerse yourself into this if you can. For a little bit and let's uh, let's get at this so here's our initial look we're in a 1-2-2 two, two, and I want you to notice the equidistant spacing between everybody now these two bottom guys uh, we have some limitations because there's a lane all right we'd probably put people right here and right here if we could but we've only got that three second lane we can't do that so we've got that equidistant uh, spacing so that's there and um, we want to uh, sustain that equidistant spacing all the time. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's see what we want to do. Any zone offense in particular, if you think about some things that you want to do, uh, you probably want to score with the greatest effectiveness or efficiency per possession. You know, uh, you know, the more elite you become as a coach, you, the more each possession really counts. And you don't want to just, uh, you know, uh, be nonchalant in that. So you want greater sufficiency. You want as many different types of scoring opportunities as possible. 
Okay, I, I'm sure you want that. You want to force as many defensive players out of position as possible. Okay, you want to kind of eliminate some of these weak side help opportunities. So you got to create those atmospheres. Okay, and you want to develop a scheme where the ball uh, will not be pressured at the time of the shot. All right, your guys are going to be much more effective shooting open shots than they are with the hand in the face, whether you're on the block or uh, whether you're uh, uh, three um, uh, at the three-point line. Well, let's uh, let's look at uh, these situations here. Let's just start out with the first situation. All right. Now, if I take if, if here's what I don't want you to do. I do not want you to pass the ball here. Okay. I don't want you to make that pass because what will happen is that this guy will have plenty of time to get over here to help. Okay. So you've got to wait on this. This guy has to wait. You have to wait. Do not make. Do not make that pass, all right? So we're going to get some kind of penetration. So let's start to penetrate. Now you can penetrate in a couple different ways, all right? I want you to think about, uh, think about this. You know, you can come straight down the middle, but what if you started off over here with the ball, and now you started to dribble this way? What do you think this guy will do? Stay with you. He'll go with you for a while, won't he? All right, and now what if, you sh what if he gets to here? Is he still on you? Uh, maybe. And what if he's here? You may drag this guy way out of position. So if I'm in the equidistant mentality, if the ball moves from here to here to here, and this guy takes a step this way, or takes a step up and then takes a step over, what should this guy be doing? Okay, he's going to take a step here. All right. Now he could step into this area if he wants because quite frankly that might be a nice open look all right but just for the start of this thing we're gonna we're gonna have this guy come over here and come into this spot now as these guys converge all right now think do you want a little midget right here you want your your five foot three guard in this position or do you want somebody with a little bit more height okay well a good passer but he may be a good passer but if he's only five three uh, he may not be able to get the ball around these uh, these guys here. So we'll talk about the individual personnel spots in a moment. But as this guy comes in here, this guy to take a step here. Now, if this guy starts to pick him up and he takes a step here, then what do you think this guy should do? Same okay, same thing. Thank you. He should take a step here or he should take a step here, one of these two. You might want that three-point line and you may say, these are my three-point shooters and I want them to have it. Okay? All right, so let's say I come right to the middle here, we suck these guys in a little bit, and now I want to throw it over here. What can I do to get everybody leaning that way? Ball fake. Okay, so it's a simple ball fake. I got the ball, I ball fake here, and notice I'm, I'm on my inside foot again. I ball fake to this side, that sucks everybody over to about here, okay? And then all of a sudden, I throw it back to this guy, okay? Now, if I get it back to this guy really quickly, as soon as the ball leaves this man's hand, as soon as it leaves his hand, this guy races towards this spot. Now, if we did the ball fake, now we're going to do it right here instead of here. Do you see the difference? That's just a foot. But that might be the distance necessary to guarantee you're going to get a basket. So... Now I've got the question, who is guarding this guy right here? He now has the ball. Who's guarding him? Defensive forward. This, this guy right here? Okay. So he's going to, he said, well, I better get out on this guy. So if that's the case, and as soon as this pass is, is leaving his hand, this guy cr crush, cr crashes right to the spot and seals him. And at the same moment, this guy comes right here. Okay. So, have you ever seen these volleyball players where they, where they set the ball and they, the ball's coming and they hit it just like that and boom? All right. Now, I'm not suggesting you have your players make those kind of passes, but if this ball can go from here to here to here or bypass this guy if you want to and throw it right here, who is to stop him? I'm asking the question. All right. What would you guys do? You might say, well, we'll bring this guy over. Well, if he, he's trailing, and if you bring this guy over, 
and this guy is supposed to be equidistant between these guys, what does this guy do? He fades, he fades into this spot right down here. This guy's going to go with him here, so he's going to have a great spot right here. Okay? So, usually I'm not fond of cross-court passes, but I'm not sure if they can take this away satisfactorily. Okay? So, you can do the ball fake. They come back, throw it to the wing. He catches it immediately. We don't throw it to the ankles. We, don't, we catch it right here, and boom, we're throwing it in. Take your pick. Throw it here. And then he can do one of these where he catches it, does a bounce pass, or he can just tip it to this guy, or we just throw it right away. Okay? Now let's say it doesn't work. We fumbled up. All right? So this guy's got the ball. This guy came over here. This guy's here. He's got to clear out. And now we're at the same spot. Okay? So now what happens? This guy will step out. We'll have a ball reversal to him. And he can do whatever he wants. He can now come over here if he wants. Or he can come here and drag this guy over. Now we throw it to him. Okay, as soon as the ball leaves his hand, or, you, or even before it leaves his hand, it's in motion. His hand is in motion to make that pass from here to here. Then this guy's going to come right up here. And if we ball fake, then we go from here to here. We suck him in here. He comes up here, sets that seal. This guy comes over to this spot. This guy either dumps it here, dumps it here, or he's got an open shot. If this guy comes down and guards him, who is guarding this guy? Absolutely no one. Okay? So, so, I mean, you can see on paper. Now, obviously, we're on paper and we're not, we're not in real life. But if you think about defensively, you always want to be in the best possible position. All right? And what, was ha what this seal will do is it'll attack the most vulnerable, the most critical spot, and cause to neutralize that guy. All right? And hey, we used to dump it down to Scott Kramer, who's now the coach at Nevis, and we'd dump it down to him, and he'd get fouled all day long, and, and uh, we were very successful at, at being able to uh, run this. So the first thing we do is we, you know, we, we get the ball to the wing, and the wing is immediately passes it to the uh, middle guy or throwing it straight to this guy. It doesn't matter. Okay? So again, if that doesn't work, then we just start it over one more time. Hey, Coach, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you're looking for more resources just like that, check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. If you're looking for a mentor, if you're looking for solutions to your problems, check it out up above 14-day free trial.